right. Trenton here with Soundlink Magazine with the guys and nothing more, Johnny and Daniel. How you guys doing? Doing good, man. Yeah, doing great. Awesome. So you guys are on a headliner run going through Charlotte today and stuff. So um, what's what's the show's been like? What's the other bands on this tour been like for you guys? Um, so far, the show's been incredible. Uh, been having a lot of people come out, and it's been packed rooms and people singing all the lyrics on the new record, which is always a great feeling since we've been working on that thing for like a year and a half so it's finally nice to <laughs> let it out into the world and hear it being sung back to you um the other bands are great um i think hell or high waters probably um pumping up people the most right now i'd say each band's killing it but they're they're in particular just got a really hype live show and so they get the fans really ready and uh my ticket home they they've got some really great music and palisades too they were a, a dark horse they kind of came out of nowhere we had another band uh on the tour uh called as lions and they dropped yeah, off so yeah. palisades came palisades came in and we were stoked that that they did because they really made the bill uh a little more diverse yeah yeah the second um i think it was the first the second time i saw you guys it was maybe a year ago like the color morale hopped on the show there too and stuff with other band had a drop so um yeah just talking about that from then till now the growth you guys have had you know um some people may not know your full history. You may think this is like your second album or something, but you guys have been doing this for a long time. And, and you guys are finally, you know, getting to that, you know, part where people know who you guys are, come to see you guys and stuff. And so um, what's that journey been like? What's kept you guys going in, throughout the early years and stuff to, to like not give up knowing that you're going to hit this, this, this point in your career someday? Yeah, um, man, it's, uh, it's been a, a, a bumpy road at times, and then other times it finally it feels like the wind's being at our back, and it's you got all this momentum and stuff. But during the making of this record, I think each time you go back into the cave, um, there's a lot of fears and uncertainties because you're you're out of the spotlight for a little while, you know. And we go back, we don't have a, a roaring audience every night anymore, and it's just back to the drawing board, you know. Yeah. And so there was a lot of uh, a lot of fears in that growth, um, but we always come out the other side with something in hand, and this record was that. And uh, but it's been an amazing, amazing few years. Uh, things have changed drastically in our lives, and we've just been trying to hang on. Yeah, this record was also like crowdfunded too, correct? So uh, how how was that going into it? You know, was this, was this the first crowdfunded album you guys have done? And uh, what what did it mean that people were actually willing to pay for an album, knowing that you guys are delivered before they even heard it. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the self-titled we crowdfunded um, and did a Kickstarter, um, and that was really cool. Um, this one was more of like a, uh, I guess like a big pre-sale, but it, it, to have that many people like come on board, um, yeah, like you said, just in hopes... Uh, that we will actually deliver a record and not break up, you know, in the in the <laughs> meantime. You know, I think I don't know, it was incredible, but it didn't really make it didn't really make sense to me until we started signing everything that we were going to send out to all the people that, that supported. Many, that many and there were that yeah it, yeah like the vinyls arrived at the band house and it was a pallet and a half. Oh, yeah, it was like sixteen hundred pounds of vinyl. We had to carry up this hill into the house, you know, from work the driveway. Out. <laughs> yeah. And then spend nine hours just on that. But it, it was, I, I don't know, it was cool. It was really cool. It's like this is going to someone that believed in us. And um, and this, you know, the band means everything to us. So it's cool to know that there are people out there that love this band kind of like we do in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. Something I want to talk about on the album, though, is I've listened to it a couple of times. And you guys kind of had it on the last one, too. It's these little interludes of some British guy talking about something. And so um, who comes up with this? Who is that guy? And uh, what are these things that you guys are trying to do to tie into the album with these little interludes and stuff with this these, these little speeches going on in it? Yeah. Um, the guy you're hearing is Alan Watts. He's a philosopher from the, I'd say, the 50s, 60s kind of era. Um <clears throat> But he's somebody I found years ago just going down the YouTube rabbit trails. Um, I like to listen to a lot of different uh, great minds and people that are just much smarter than I am and much wiser than I am and just see what nuggets of gold I can take with me in life. And one, one of those um, recommended videos was Alan Watts at the time. And I remember the more I listened, the more I was like, man, I feel like a lot of his ideas are so relevant today even though he was you know, saying all these things in the 60s. And um, I 
feel like, you know, using him on the record was a way to take it uh, deeper rather than just having the lyrics provide the substance, um, kind of guide the listener into our thought process a little more. And also Alan Watts was someone who's not very well known, <clears throat> which I, I think it's kind of a cool person to, for us to kind of, um, I don't know what the word is, flagship or... Champion? Um, yeah, 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 champion yeah. Alan Watts, because um, more people need to know about him. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I was typically the, the one who would go through his lectures and I just listen at night falling asleep, you know, to hours of footage or, or, or uh, uh, I guess it was footage. A lot of them are videos and I'd just like be in and out of sleep and then I'd hear like a phrase that just like was the phrase yeah. and I'd go, oh, and I'd wake up and like screenshot the time on the YouTube and then email it to myself and then go back to sleep. And so it was a combination of that over a year or so. And uh, so that sort of, you saw my guy in the record, this this one, um, it seems like there's like three different parts to it and stuff with those things. I believe there's like, you know, like I think there's like three of them on the new one. And so uh, which, which like, how you guys, how'd you guys like dissect that album and stuff to like figure out, okay, we need to organize it this way or write it this way, or is it all written the way it is, it is track listed? Or did you guys write everything and then like figure out which ones go with each lecture? We, we wrote everything and it was in a giant pile. <laughs> okay. Um, we, tr we, we played around like a jigsaw puzzle with different arrangements, but uh, Mark actually had the idea of it kind of being like this, um, almost like a death and rebirth kind of grieving, healing, and new hope kind of process, which is a lot. When he said that, I was like, oh yeah, like I relate 100% what I went through the year leading up to the record and then the year through the record. That's exactly what it felt like. And so. That's why you see those, you know, uh, convict yeah. divide and, or ambition destruction, convict divide, respond, uh, react, respond, um, and accept disconnect. And it, it, I don't know, it just really outlines um, the songs just kind of, they kind of manifested themselves into an order, I guess yeah. is what I'm getting at. And uh, one thing about your band is, like, you guys, the record doesn't do you guys justice. People, You are a live band. People have to come out and see you. You guys are insane on stage and your vo your vocal range you hear it on the record you're like oh that's awesome but you hear it live and you're like oh that guy can actually do that live and uh you guys had this bassinator thing for a few years but now i saw you guys at rebellion this year and at the apmas and stuff and on on their little video and you guys have the like this like controller thing up there now so like what goes into like choreographing the, this, this live show and stuff and uh what, what how do you guys come up with these weird unique ideas to like bring on the road with you yeah uh the, i mean this show should i just take it yeah um <laughs> We definitely had totally up the game uh, this tour, like this cycle uh, with the Scorpion Tail. It's basically, Johnny had the idea years ago uh, to DJ the band, to be able to manipulate like live audio, like Mark and I actually playing instruments and Johnny singing versus like manipulating already recorded stuff. So, so the, idea, the idea started there and he had a device that would do it, but it was just like a little video game controller thing. And, um, yeah, you know, we actually jammed with it, and it's like, wow, that's incredible. Like, the sounds it made were, were phenomenal. Like, the things he was able to do is just, like, it was weird playing it, and, but hearing, like, that he's in control of your instrument sometimes, you know? <laughs> so it's like, well, we have to do this. Like, it's too cool to not. So um, I wanted to make something that was just huge and awesome and that would show the audience, like, they would see a big movement to correspond with, like, a big audio sound you know and that, that was the idea um and so yeah i just started working on scorpion tail and um it's i don't know it's hard to say how it went from a to b but it did and i, I built this thing to lift the drums into the air also and i didn't know when i was building the lift for everything to put johnny into the sky like i didn't i thought it might go towards a new drum solo idea but then as it all as both pieces kind of came closer to finishing um i kind of just stuck scorpion tail on the side of drumtron when it was up and it's like this is it like that's too cool that's awesome so yeah all right and uh what are you guys going up to for the fall you guys are obviously on the headliner now and stuff so what are you guys going doing i guess going into the holiday season and all that for for nothing more um we're going to europe after this us tour um we still have another leg of this tour though um where we're doing the west coast and some uh are we doing more canada on this one or is that next year um i can't remember if we're going back to canada again 
Anyway, well, we're doing Canada sometime. <laughs> oh, we are, we are. West Coast Canada. Okay. Not Vancouver, though, I don't think. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so then we're going to Europe in late November and December, and then we're going to be home for Christmas, and then we're doing Shiprocked, which is like a yeah. cruise. Yeah. Uh, I've never done that before, so that'll be fun. Okay. And then we're coming back for another U.S. tour okay. and hitting up markets we didn't hit this time. All right, well, Daniel and Johnny, thanks a lot for talking to us today. I'm Trent with Sound Lake Magazine, and these guys are with nothing more. Thanks for watching.